All right, well, we're going to go through the, we're going to do the quiz at the end of class today. Um, I'm going to just start going through some of these problems from the Rankine cycle uh, that I've assigned already. Um, so you have something to compare your work to, and you can sort of think through it as I think through it. Um, besides, so I've assigned one through three. Besides, in the Rankine cycle homework, besides those, does anyone have any homework questions you'd like me to answer? Okay. So this is Rankin cycle number one. And it says that it's an ideal Rankin cycle. Well, that's the only kind we've talked about so far. Uh, that means that on a temperature entropy diagram, it looks like this. Um, this is state one, state two, state three, state four. Um, one to two is the turbine. Two to three is the condenser. Three to four is the pump. And four to one is the boiler. And it says uh, water is the working fluid. Um, so we're going to have to get some stuff out of the table. Let me just pull up. And I think <clears throat> it looks like everything's given in terms of pressures. So I think all we're going to need is... Um, the saturation table indexed by pressure. Okay, so I'll just set that up here. Bless you. All right, and it says, so um, I'm going to set this up. Uh, and we're just going to fill in this table as we go. We got state one, state two, state three, and state four. Um, one to two is a turbine, and that's isentropic. Two to three is a constant pressure or isobaric condenser. Three to four is an isentropic pump. Um, and four to one is an isobaric boiler. Um, the pump is also, um, over that whole process, the material is incompressible. So remember, we're probably going to use that. And what does it say? Uh, the condenser pressure is 6 kilopascals. So, um, P2 is 6 times 10 to the third, and P3 is also 6 times 10 to the third. It's isobaric, so we know those two are the same. Um, 
So it says the condenser pressure is six kilopascals. Saturated vapor enters the turbine at, at 10 megapascals. Um, so P1 is 10 times 10 to the six pascals. Um, bless you. Since the boiler is constant pressure, we also know that P4 is the same as P1, so that's 10 megapascals. Um, and uh, we want to determine the heat transfer rates in kilojoule per kilogram of steam uh, for the working fluid and calculate the thermal efficiency. So to get the efficiency, which is, you know, basically we always want to just figure out the enthalpies at these various states. Um, well, right now we have pressures at all of these states. Um, so where can we figure out the enthalpies based on that? Well, anywhere that is set a saturation state, uh, we only need to no one single property to look up any other property. Uh, there's one other thing though. Um, at state two, uh, we need to know what the quality is to look it up because you can see that state two is in that, uh, that mix region inside the vapor dome. So how are we gonna do that? Um, what we're gonna do is state one, since that's a saturated vapor, we can just directly look up the enthalpy for one thing, but we can also look up the specific entropy at state one. And since the turbine is isentropic, then we know that that's also the entropy at state two. Okay. Since we know the entropy at state two and we know the pressure, we can use that to figure out the quality. Okay. So that's, that's the way we're going to go with this stuff. Okay. So, uh, right away we can also, uh, already look up anything we want in the table. Uh, so for a saturated vapor um, at a pressure of 10 megapascals, uh, 10 megapascals is uh, 10 bar. So um, we want two things, the specific enthalpy for the vapor, um, and that is going to be 2778.1, that's using kilojoules, so I'm changing all this to SI units. You want 100 bar or is it 10 Yeah, bar? I thought it was 100 bar. One bar is, the, oh, 10 times 10 to the six. Yes, you are right. Thank you. I'm just yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Huh? Uh, let's see. So 100 bar, 27, 24.7. And the specific entropy, yeah, 5.614 times 10 to the third. And um, so for state two, now we know the entropy is 5.614 times 10 to the third. Um, so now for state two, we know that 5.614 times 10 to the third is X, the quality, times the specific entropy for the gas at a pressure of six times 10 to the third. Uh, 
uh, 6 times 10 to the third is 0.06 bar. Um, so 8.33, 8.33, and 0.51 plus uh, 1 minus x times 0 0.51 times 10 to the third. Um, and so uh, 5.614, let's uh, get rid of all these. Um, so 5.614 is equal, let's go, minus 0 0.51 is equal to x times 8.33 minus 0.51. And so x is equal to uh, 0 0.653 about. Okay, so now that we know that, um, The specific enthalpy at state 2 is 0 0.653 times the specific enthalpy for the gas at this pressure of 6 times 10 to the third. Um, 2567. 2567 and then 151. 2567. Okay, 256. 7, this is all times 10 to the third, plus uh, 1 minus this, what would that be, 0 0.347 times 251 times 10 to the third. And so you get 1763 times 10 to the third. Okay, so now uh, state three, that's a saturated liquid. So that pressure is enough for us to calculate that. Uh, That would just be... Yeah, the, you're right. The one we just had. So the... Oh, did I use 251? Shoot. So this should be 1728. times 10 to the third. Um, okay, so uh, this H3 is 151 times 10 to the third. And now for state four, that's the that's the sort of weird one because that's the only one of these states that's not at a saturation. Um, that's not at saturation. Um, but during this process, we know that this is incompressible. And so we can use, um, so for state four, we can use the fact that Remember, um, 
the change in specific enthalpy is equal to the change in specific internal energy plus the change in PV. Uh, incompressible means that there's no change in V. Uh, constant pressure Uh, well, this is from three to four. So this is equal to incompressible. It's isentropic. Uh, Bless you. The pressure does change, though. So this is V times the change in pressure. Mm -hmm. We know the change in pressure. Um, this we can just, we should just be able to, no, we can't look that up, but we can use the fact that uh, the change in specific internal energy is equal to 4186, because this is water, uh, times the change in temperature. Um, what do we know about this? We don't know anything about the temperature. State four is the problem. We know the pressure. Um, I guess one thing we could do here is we could figure out, you know, use the table to figure out the entropy at, um, at state three. And then since it's isentropic from state three to state four, we know the specific entropy at state four. So, uh, and then we could do sort of like a reverse lookup at that pressure that we know. So let's do that. All right, so at state three, uh, the specific entropy uh, we had a pressure of six times 10 to the third. Uh, this was a saturated liquid. So we have 0.521 times 10 to the third. And so at state four, this compressed liquid, we have a specific entropy of 0 0.521 times 10 to the third. And so instead of using the incompressible stuff, uh, we'll just use the table for a compressed liquid. We don't know the temperature. Well, we know the the pressures don't go down that low in that table. Was it at 100 bar at this point too? So it's where is it from? Oh, at state four, it's 100 bar. Okay, yes, yes, thank you. 
So 100 bar, 100 bar. Okay, it's on here. And uh, the specific entropy that we're looking for is 0 0.521 times 10 to the third. Um, 0.521. So, okay, so it's somewhere between, uh, it's somewhere between 40, 20 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius. Um, we can do an interpolation here. Um, it's going to be pretty close to 176. But let's do an interpolation. So our known values are... 0.569 and 0.295. Um, and 0.521 in between them. Uh, and okay, so we want. H at four is equal to um, the higher value of H for um, for a hundred bar. Uh, so one, no, sorry, the lower value of H ninety three point three plus. Uh, 176 minus 93 divided by 0. 0.57 minus times uh, the entropy that we know we have, 0 0.521 minus 0 0.29. This all needs to be times 10 to the third. And we get 161.8, let's call it, times 10 to the third. I think you actually shared an easier way to do this last class. What's the easier way? So you shared that um, you could find it, the work of the pump, so W dot over M dot is equal to the differential of the Enthalpy, so H4 minus H3, and it's also equal to the specific volume times the differential pressure. Yeah. So you know the differential pressure. You know it's a non-compressible liquid. So right. You have H4 minus H3 is equal to V4 minus G3. Yeah. And then I got the same answer. Okay. S4. Let's see, V. I think that's easier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot you easier. Don't have to do yes. Because that works too, but right. I hate interpolation, so. Yes, so. Uh, and then that's just something I'm just going to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. That, that would have been easier, I yes. I my arm, so I had it in the <laughs> Yes, you are right. That is easier. Okay, so the other way to go, the better way to go here, is we know the fact that um, from. So it came from the TDS equation, and we got that H4 minus H3 uh, is equal to um, the specific volume at 3 times 
the pressure at four minus uh, the pressure at three. Yes, that's a much better way. H4 is equal to V3 times the quantity P4 minus P3 uh, plus H3. Okay, but you get the same thing, so that's yeah. a good sign. Um, Uh, you can look that up uh, in state three because, you know, you can just, so uh, in state three, we have a pressure of six times 10 to the third. So we're going to use the specific volume for the saturated liquid. Um, so that is, whoops. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically 0 0.001. So, yeah, point, 1.01 point oh one basically times 10 to the minus third. Okay, so now that you have... So now we have H4 is equal to, what was that, 161.8. And now we can calculate the efficiency. We have all those enthalpies. So this is equal to 1 minus uh, H2. 1728 minus H3, uh, 151, divided by H1 minus H4, so 27.24. minus H4, which is 162. And you get an efficiency of 0 0.384. Um, and then the other thing that we're supposed to calculate is the heat transfer rates for the boiler and the condenser uh, in kilojoules per kilogram. Um, so uh, we're trying to calculate now Q dot for the condenser over M dot. And that is H2 minus H3. Um, so that is 1728 minus 151 times 10 to the third. So 1577 times 10 to the third. And then Q dot for the boiler divided by M dot. Is H1 minus H4. That's 2724 minus 162.
So that's 2562 times 10 to the third. And this is, um, remember, this is also equal to, so the wording that they give us is really we want to calculate the heat transfer divided by the mass flow rate. But remember, those two are the same thing. And uh, the heat transfer at the boiler divided by the mass flow rate is the same as that. Is that just steady state? Yes. Uh, so this is whatever. This is joules per um, kilogram. Anybody have any questions about that one? Okay, so uh, yeah, you know, I didn't do it, and that's why I went down this kind of ugly road. This really, this is not the way to, um, don't do this. Um, but uh, this, this stuff in the red box, if you remember the, for all of this stuff, if you have this sitting next to you, uh, I think it's a good idea, you know, just remember that you have this expression, WT over M dot is H1 minus H2. Um, QC dot over M dot is H2 minus H3. WP dot over M dot is H4 minus H3. And then this is the one we ended up using uh, W, oh, uh, it's a continuation of this one. Um, so WP dot over M dot is equal to H4 minus H3, and that's also equal to the specific volume at either of those two states, because we're assuming it's incompressible, times the quantity P4 minus P3. So have these next to you while you do these problems. Are those going to be given on the cut? Yeah. Gonna... Yep. Okay. Uh, let's stop there and do the quiz.